In this tutorial, we will see a second example of the cost calculations for aggregate planning. This example is for you to try. In it, we will be using the following costs. 1. The cost of producing one unit using regular time is $11. 2. The cost of producing one unit using overtime is $17. 3. The cost of producing one unit using subcontracting is $99. Really what we are saying with this high cost is that we do not really want to subcontract production. For the cost of holding one unit in inventory for one period is $4. This is much higher than the holding cost for the first example with similar labor cost. Most likely this is due to much higher material cost. The more an item cost to produce, including the material that is not normally included in this analysis, the higher its holding cost. 5. The cost of back ordering one unit for one period is $10. 6. The cost of hiring one person is $500. 7. The cost of laying off one person is $250. They plan to hire one person in period 4 and another in period 5 to meet rising demand. They expect demand to fall after period 8 so they plan to lay off two people at the end of period 8. Additionally, beginning inventory is 50. The production plan is shown on the slide. Notice that regular time production goes up in period 4 and again in period 5. That is due to the additional hires. Finish costing out this plan. Since you've seen an example already, let me suggest that you pause the video and try to work this problem on your own. Once you're done, you can use the video to check your work and spot any mistakes you might have made. No, seriously, you need to pause the video and try to work this problem on your own. I will assume you know how to cost out plans in later tutorials, so it is critical that you test yourself and make sure that you can do this. As we did with the first example, we will work out all the inventories first before starting on the cost. For period 1, the beginning inventory of 50 was given. That 50 plus the total production of 1,200 minus the forecast of 1,200 leaves an ending inventory of 50. 50 beginning inventory and 50 ending inventory averages to 50. We have an adequate amount, so there are no back orders. For period 2, the forecast is 1,150 and the total production is 1,200, so inventory goes up from 50 to 100. That gives us an average inventory of 75 with no back orders. For period 3, the forecast is 1300 and the total production is 1300, so inventory remains at 100 with no back orders. That gives us an average inventory of 100. For period 4, the forecast is 1500 and total production is 1500, so inventory remains at 100 with no back orders. That gives us an average inventory of 100. For period 5, the forecast is 1600 and total production is 1600, so inventory remains at 100 with no back orders. That gives us an average inventory of 100. For period 6, the forecast is 1,550 and total production is 1,600, so inventory goes up by 50 to 150. That gives us an average inventory of 125 with no back orders. For period 7, the forecast is 1,700 and total production is 1,700, so inventory remains at 150 with no back orders. That gives us an average inventory of 150. For period 8, the forecast is 1,750 and total production is 1,600, so inventory drops by 150 to 0. That gives us an average inventory of 75 with no back orders. The total of the average inventory values is 775. The total of the back orders is 0. If you missed any of the inventory values, that mistake will affect your cost calculations. So, let me suggest that you pause the video and try to rework the inventory calculations on your own. Once you're done, you can use the video to check your work and spot any mistakes you might have made. Just like with the inventory, we will work the cost on a period-by-period -period basis. For period 1, regular production of 1200 times $11 equals $13,200. Average inventory of 50 times $4 equals $200. That yields a total period cost of $13,400. For period 2, we produce 1200 again, so regular time production again costs $13,200. Average inventory of 75 times $4 equals $300. That yields a total period cost of $13,500. In period 3, we again produce 1200 in regular time, so regular time production again costs 
We also produce 100 in overtime at a cost of $17 each for a total overtime cost of $1,700. Average inventory of 100 times $4 equals $400. That yields a total period cost of $15,300. For period for regular production goes up to $1,400 and $1,400 times $11 equals $15,400. Overtime production remains at $100, so cost remains at $1,700. We hire one person this period at a cost of $500. Average inventory remains at $100, so inventory costs remain $400. That yields a total period cost of $18,000. For period 5, regular production goes up to $1,600, and $1,600 times $11 equals $17,600. We hire one additional person in this period at a cost of $500. Average inventory remains at $100, so inventory cost remains $400. That yields a total period cost of $18,500. How are you doing so far? For period 6, regular production remains at $1,600, so cost remains $17,600. Average inventory goes up to $125, and $125 times $4 equals $500. That yields a total period cost of $18,100. For period 7, regular production remains at $1,600, so cost remains $17,600. We produced 100 in overtime at a cost of $17 each for a total overtime cost of $1,700. Average inventory goes up to $150, and $150 times $4 equals $600. That yields a total period cost of $19,900. For period 8, regular production remains at $1,600, so cost remains $17,600. Two workers are laid off at a cost of $250 each for a total cost of $500. Average inventory goes down to $75, and $75 times $4 equals $300. That yields a total period cost of $18,400. Regular production costs total to $125,400. Overtime production costs total to $5,100. Hiring costs total to $1,000, and layoff costs total to $500. Inventory costs total to $3,100. There were no back orders. That gives us a total aggregate plan cost of $135,100. Did you get it? This can be tough to pick up. If you did not get a total cost of $135,100, please consider watching this pair of tutorials again. Keep in mind, the remaining aggregate planning tutorials build off of these cost tutorials. If you found that this video helped you with your operations management problem, please consider liking the video and even subscribing to the channel.